Super Sock Jose Lothario, who, if you were a WWE fan back in the mid-90s, you remember as the man who trained Shawn Michaels. Uh, and if you grew up in Texas back in the 70s, you probably remember him as one of the all-time great top babyface stars. He died this week, the age of 83. Uh, he was a big star wherever he worked. He worked in Mexico. He worked here in the States, uh, a lot down in Texas, uh, although not exclusively there, but that was sort of the area he was uh, seen most in. Uh, he did work a lot in Florida as well. He won a bunch of NWA titles uh, down there. For better or worse, though, he's going to be remembered as the trainer of the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Uh, that's what the vast majority of the stories that I've seen done on him this week have headlined with. Uh, and it's all because of that one little run that he had there in 96 into the early part of 97 where he managed uh, HBK. They brought him in for the boyhood dream chase going into WrestleMania 12. Shawn Michaels went back to his roots. They did those video packages. And Jose stuck with him. Uh, I'm still not quite sure why now that I look back on it. I mean, it, it kind of made sense for the story they were telling for him to be part of the buildup to WrestleMania 12. Uh, but frankly, I don't know that uh, it did Shawn Michaels any favors in the cool factor department to have, uh, you know, this old guy managing him for the for the remainder of the year. Maybe that's why people turned on him uh, by the time he got to the Garden in November that year. Uh, but yeah, Jose stuck with him for, for I you know, say almost an entire year. Um, and And really, it's more accurate to say that Jose was one of the men who trained... Shawn Michaels, he was not the only man. The other person was this guy, Ken Johnson, uh, but I rarely see his name mentioned. So if you read Shawn's first book, that's the uh, Heartbreak and Triumph book, Michaels claims that Jose really only trained him for two months at the start of his career. He praised him. He said he learned a lot from him, got a lot of uh, life advice and just general advice on the business and how to conduct yourself. You know, keep your mouth shut and your ears open, that sort of thing. But he said after two months, Jose said that he already had the hang of it. And Jose was trying to get Sean booked in Mid-South because Jose was friendly with Bill Watts. So he sort of, or, or Sean figures what happened. I don't know that he knew this for sure, but he figures Jose put a good word in for him uh, with Watts. And that it would be, you know, good for him to work with some of the stars in that uh, territory at the time. Uh, Jose also, by the way, trained Gino Hernandez, and I have a mailbag question a little bit later about Gino that I'm going to answer, because as big as Shawn Michaels went on to become, Gino could have been as big or, or nearly as big had he not died so young, but uh, we'll get to that question a little bit later. WWE put a statement out about uh, Jose's death, saying that despite never winning a WWE-sanctioned championship or competing at WrestleMania, Jose Lothario made a lasting mark on the WWE universe by simply agreeing to train a cocky teenager from San Antonio, Texas, a cocky teenager who grew up to become WWE Hall of Famer Shawn Michaels. And they had a quote in here from Shawn saying, I think every young boy who lived in Texas knew who Jose Lothario was. This is what he told uh, WWE Magazine back in 1996. This is not a, a current quote. He said, I first saw him on TV when I was 12. Uh, he was the first superstar to come across my television screen. He is a legend in San Antonio, Cuba, Mexico, and just about everywhere. Um, and it mentioned that he uh, briefly displayed his talents in WWE by humbling Jim Cornette in a match at In Your House 10 Mind Games. Now, I remember that match. I remember that pay-per-view primarily for the main event, which is one of the all-time great WWE pay-per-view main events. But I remember that match. It only went about a minute, thank God, with uh, Jim Cornette and Jose Lothario. Of course, Jose won. And I remember, the thing I remember about it was Cornette came out to the ring. They came out alone. Cornette came out to Vader's theme song. And Jose came out to Sexy Boy, which was hilarious. That was 96, so that would have made him, let's see here, he was born in 1934, so he would have been 62. He would have been 62 years old at the time. Well, you know, I guess him coming out to Sexy Boy at uh, 62 is no less ridiculous than Sean coming out to it at 53. 
So he and Sean also wrestled a tag team match on Monday Night Raw once uh, back in 96 against Vader and Jim Cornette, uh, which Vader and Cornette won. Fast forward to Survivor Series in Madison Square Garden that year, the night that Sean lost the championship to Psycho Sid. Jose played into the finish of that match, if you remember, when Sid uh, grabbed one of the television cameras and he whacked Jose in the chest with the camera. And Jose fell to the ground, and he was he was faking a heart attack on the floor. Sean was distracted, and that led to Sid beating him for the championship. Now, Jose was back on WWE television in 1999 uh, during the Attitude Era. I don't know how many people remember this. I barely remembered it myself until I saw a mention of 99, and I was like, 99? And I was thinking about it. I said, you know what? I have a vague memory of him being on television, but I couldn't remember if it was on Raw or, or what the context of it was. And what it was is that WWE did a show uh, in Sean's hometown of San Antonio. And it turned out it wasn't Raw. It was Sunday Night Heat. And they had not won, on this particular episode, they had not won but two Lion's Den matches. They had one between Owen Hart and Steve Blackman. And then another impromptu one between Triple H and the Big Boss Man. Which I definitely <laughs> did not remember until I went back and I watched it. Is like amazing to watch. Like even those early Heat episodes were must see, and they were worth watching back then. And they had big names on them. It's it's incredible sometimes to go back and watch that stuff. But they had a segment on that show at the beginning with Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon was out there with Shane and the Stooges, and this was right after Sean had been attacked. I think the week before on television. Uh, on Raw, when that was when they found Sean bloody in the parking lot. I think he was taking time off to have uh, finally have back surgery. So they wrote him off the show. So Vince is out there. He's talking about Shawn Michaels. And all of a sudden, they spot Jose Lothario sitting in the crowd, like deep, like five rows in, in the crowd. So they invite him to come into the ring, and Jose comes into the ring. He ends up shoving Vince, but Jose gets beaten down by Patterson and Briscoe and, and Vince. And that would have been the last time that we saw him on WWE television. Uh, he was never inducted into their Hall of Fame. 96 was the last year, I think, of the WWE Hall of Fame before they resurrected it in 2004. But a few months later in 99, uh, he and Shawn opened the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy. And I found the original announcement for it from a Bill Banks, an old Bill Banks column on WWE.com back in 99, and it said that it described it at the time as a joint venture between Sean and Jose, and that they would be joined by Rudy Boy Gonzalez and Ken Johnson as the trainers, the same Ken Johnson who, who helped train HBK. Not long after that, Sean and Jose had some kind of falling out, uh, and it's never been publicly revealed, to my knowledge, what the nature of their falling out was. I don't think either one of them ever publicly commented on there being a falling out. Uh, I figure it had to be, and this is just guessing, of course, I figure it has to be one of two things. It was either Sean maybe didn't like the way that Jose was, was training people. Maybe he thought he was a little you know, old school. I, I don't know. More likely, let's be honest, it had to do with money. They had to do, I'm sure somehow, some way, it always comes down to money. And so it was probably some kind of business disagreement. Whatever it was, Jose left and the school continued on without him. But I don't know that the two of them ever patched up their differences. He did have nice things to say about Jose in his book. It's not like he completely ignored him. He didn't talk about him, I don't think, in his Hall of Fame speech, which doesn't mean anything. But it would be a shame if uh, they didn't speak for many, many years for some petty reason.